Do you love math? If you do love math, I suggest to go to www.mrmathing.net or YouTube Mr. Ng today. Very easy and compatible to work with. Alright, let's go over 1.22. Um, it says two real solutions, but basically they're kind of like quadratic word problems. Quadratic word problems. So steps to solving quadratic word problems by graphing. A couple of things you can do that are super helpful is I'm going to call this, um, my pen's not working, uh, step zero, um, define the variables. And basically that what that means is just like, what is x equal to? And then when you're actually doing the work, step one, you can solve the equation for zero. Step two, you can find the axis of symmetry, AOS, line of symmetry, axis of symmetry, Step three, a table of values, table of values. And step four, determine the zeros. And remember, zeros are x-intercepts. Those are synonymous, same names. Okay? All right, let's try this question here, this example. It says, use the quadratic equation to find two real numbers with the sum of 24 and a product of 143. Okay, sum is just, um, well, before we do that, I forgot we should just go through my steps, duh. Step zero, define the variables. X is the, uh, represents, represents one number. Right? It says two real numbers, and I have x here. Okay, so how do I get the second number? The sum of these two numbers, so x plus the second number, which I'm going to call um, x, sum is plus. So you add them together, and it equals 24. Now, we're not quite sure that the numbers are um, the same, so you can call the second number, like, because if you said x plus x, we're inferring that they're both the same. So let me just call that y. So x represents one number and y represents the other number. Okay? So what you can do is you can say something like, um, if you subtract x, you get y equals 24 minus x. This here represents an expression. The second number is equal to 24 minus the other number. One of those numbers is equal to 24 minus uh, the other number. Okay? And we're still under step number zero, defining the variables, which we did. But I also want to show you here in blue, which is step zero, is that the same product of those two numbers. So if I said something like x times y, those two numbers, if I multiply them together, product means multiply, equals 143. Well, now we're saying that y represents um, 24. So I'm doing a substitution here. So x times 24 minus x equals 143. Okay? So that is essentially my equation so let's let's mark this so step zero okay uh, step let's do some green now step one is solve this equation for zero basically we're gonna set it equal to zero and what I'm gonna have to do here is um, let's let's go ahead and distribute so that would become x times 24 is 24 x they normally put the number then the variable or letter x times x is called negative x squared. And I'm going to subtract this 143. 
Um, ah, let's keep it on the side. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm switching this, why, why you're like, Mr. why'd you do that? I'm going to move everything to the left side. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that is so that I can get um, x squared to be positive. Positive. You'll see the reason why. So let's go ahead and do the opposite. So subtract 24x and add x squared. What I do to one side, I have to do to both sides. What I give to one kid, I have to give to the other kid, right? Shouldn't use that one. So this is 0, 0, 0. So you're left with x squared minus 24x plus 143. OK, so there I have um, step 1. Let's move it over here. Step 1, we um, solve the equation for 0, OK? OK, let's review what we've done so far. We've defined our variables. We solve the equation for 0, and now we're going to do the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry. The formula is x equals negative b over 2a. And from over here, I have, um, remember, the number in front of x squared is a, so that would be 1. There is b, the number in front of x. And the number all over here is just c. OK? So I can just substitute those numbers. a is 1. Let's write that. Uh, b is negative 24. Let's fill all this out. So I have negative 24 and 2 times 1. So this will give us, let's see what we got here, negative 24 over 2. And here in parentheses, that becomes negative 12. And then you have the opposite of negative 12, or you can say negative 1 times negative 12 is positive 12. So x equals 12 is my axis of symmetry. All right, let's get a table of values here. One, two, three, four, five. And we're saying this is x, my function. Um, over here, so that would be f of x equals x squared minus 24x plus 143. And we're saying this is our solution here. Remember, where does that go? Most important, that goes right in the middle, always. So that would be 12, and then you can just pick some numbers that go above it. 13, 14, and 11, and 10. All right, let's go ahead and... Okay, let's go ahead and put 14 in here. 14 squared minus 24 times 14 plus 143. So I'm going to get my calculator. So 14 squared is 196. 24 negative times 14 gives me negative 336 plus 143. Let's put all those numbers in. And I get the wonderful answer of 3. When x was 14, f of x becomes 3, or my y value becomes 3. Let's go ahead and try 13. 13 times 13 is 169. Negative 24 times 13 will give me negative 312 plus 143. So uh, plus 143 plus 169. And I get 0. Answer is 0. OK, let's do this one over here. We got 12. 12 squared is 144. 24 times 12 gives me negative 288 plus 143. 
Remember, when you're putting it into your calculator, um, sometimes they have a negative buttons, different subtraction, and some calculators can actually do both. So if you get some kind of error, sometimes that's what it is. And I get negative 1. When x was 12, x is negative 1. Okay, remember the color-coded system here. What do you think the answer is going to be? Can you predict it? I think because the blue above, it should be 0. Let's see if that is our answer. Let's put in 11. 11 squared is 121. 24 times 11 is negative 264. I'm going to add that to 121 and add 143. And the answer is 0. OK. Do you see the benefit of picking the axis of symmetry here? OK. Okay, this one's going to be in green, so what do you think the answer is going to be? I think it's going to be 3. 10, 3. Let's see. 10 squared is 100. 24 times 10 is negative 240 plus 143. So 10, 10 squared 100 minus 240 is negative 140 plus 143 gives me positive 3. There is our table of values. Oh, that was number three here. Okay, let's go to step four, which is determining the zeros. So let's graph this. Basically, we're graphing it. Let's graph it. Okay, let's, let's move ahead. Let's think ahead. Um, all these values are on the right side. Um, so at 10, 11, 12, so I'm going to draw it looks like that. And... Um, but I'm not going to draw on the scale, so you could do something like this. Let's say um, this is 5, this is 10, and this is 15. So we can say 11, 12, 13, 14. And then we have uh, 1, 2, 3. Okay, let's see what we got here. So 14, 3, so write 14 up 3. That's this one. 13, write 13 on the x-axis, and then stay, so. And then write 12 down one, so write 12 down one, something like this. Write 11, stay, and write 10 up three. Pretty good, pretty good. And what are our two numbers? Our two numbers are x equals, this number is 11, and that number is x equals 13. Let's double check that. Let's see if that works. Um, or the second number, again, you could have said, kind of confusing, but we said it was y. So let's see. x plus y equals 24. Was that what we were saying? So that would be 11 plus 13 equals 24, and that is true. 24 equals 24. See, I'm checking my answer here. Um, we said that if you multiply the two numbers, they were equal to 143. So 11 times 13 will equal 143. Does that make sense? So we basically use quadratic equations to solve the word problem. Um, so those are my two real numbers. All right, directions for questions 13 and 14, skip one problem. Let's go ahead and do this one. Use a quadratic equation to find your two numbers. Kind of like the last problem, we chose it to be x and y with a sum of two. So x plus y equals two, and their product is negative 24. If I solve for this one in terms of x, I have y equals 2 minus x. And then if I put that in over here, this is going to be my equation. Does that make sense? So 
So we define the variables. Let's go ahead and solve this for x. So I'm going to distribute here. And then um, I, want it, I want it the a value to be positive. So to do that, I'm going to move everything to the right side. See those opposites? Why do I do that? So that this is 0, this is 0. So this side is 0. Then I'll just put these in um, descending order. x squared minus 2x minus 24. Okay, so let's look at our steps above. Step zero, define the variables, solve the equation for zero, and now let's get the axis of symmetry. To get my axis of symmetry, so this was kind of like step zero. Step one here, we got it set equal to zero right here. And now step two, we're back. Step two, we're gonna get the axis of symmetry, okay? So I'm going to name my A, B's, and C's. So A is 1, B is negative 2, and C is negative 24. Which you don't really need C here, but our formula for axis of symmetry is X equals negative B over 2A. Always write down the formula. What is our B value? The B value is negative 2. And the A value is 1. Let's simplify that. Negative 2 over 2, that becomes um, negative 1, so that becomes positive 1. Let's make our table here. Where does that go? Right in the middle. Always, 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 always. Okay, so I got one, let's count up and down. And what is our function here? We have x squared minus 2x minus 24. So I got basically parentheses squared minus two times the parentheses minus 20. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's put in these values now. Let's put in 3. That'll give me um, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 6, minus 24. So 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 minus 24 is negative 18. Okay, let's do 2. 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And I get 0. 0 minus 24 is negative 24. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Not good numbers here. And I'm saying that because... Um, why am I saying that? Because I just want those numbers to match. That's all. 9 minus 6 and 3. No, no, no. Okay. Let's try one. Let's see what happens at one. I think I made a mistake. I can tell. No, nope, sum of two. Okay. What do we got? One minus two minus 24. That'll give us negative three. This will give us negative 27. So, here is the bad thing. It's getting us numbers, if you, if you think about this, we're kind of, I'm looking for a y value that equals zero, so I get an x-intercept. And I'm not getting that. So this will be negative 24. This one is uh, one. Because you can see what's happening is I have the, it looks like the red coordinates, 1, negative 27, it looks like it's more of a, a minimum, like the lowest number, if that makes sense. But we can put in our graph and calculate and see. All right, let's put this one, negative 1. 
negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 minus 24. 3 minus 24 is negative 18. So I have negative 1 comma negative 18. And what happens is if we graph this, let's see, let's see. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Let's count by 8. Um, negative 8, negative 16, negative 24. So I have 3, negative 18. So write 3 down, negative 18. Something like that. 2, negative Write 2, negative 24. Write 1 down, 27. And if you could just match them up, 0, negative 24. And left 1 down, negative 18. So just match up with the black one. OK, so here, here is my, here's my graph. Okay, so here's the hard part. We know that our answers are, wait, pencil turned off. What do you like, orange? These values we don't have. So what you could do is you can keep marching out by creating your table of values and keep going towards a bigger number and a smaller number. You can do that, okay? The point is that you can get Point, you organize your answers or your data inside a table of values. Now, let's go ahead and put this into the graphing calculator. x squared minus 2x minus 24. Okay, clear. Go top left and you're going to click y equals. Clear this out. We're going to type in x squared. The squared button is to the left of there near the 7. Minus 2x minus 24 and we'll just press graph and you can clearly see what our two answers are it's called zero six six comma zero and negative four so those two numbers that we needed negative four and this would have been a six. Okay, let's test those numbers. Negative four plus six would give us positive two, so that matches. And negative four times six would give me negative 24. So the two numbers that we have there are negative 4 and 6. Okay, let's go ahead and try number 14. Use a quadratic equation to find two real numbers with the sum of negative 15. So we're saying our two numbers are like x and y. So x times y equals negative 15. And their product, sorry, that's sum. And their product is negative 54. Okay, let's solve for this one in terms of x. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this one in now for y. So I have x times negative 15 minus x. This was step 0 defined. Step 1 we're going to now solve um, set equal to zero. Set equal to zero, which basically means we needed to get it to be zero. So if you multiply here, negative 15x minus x squared equals negative 54. And the goal is to set it equal to zero, and I don't want my a value to be negative, so I'm going to move everything to the um, we're going to move all that to the right side, okay? So to do that, we do the inverses or opposites. So it's, let's try to color, sorry. 
add 15x. Notice how I didn't line them up because they're not like terms, and x squared. 0, 0, x squared plus 15x minus 54. Okay, step two is the axis of symmetry. So I need my a, b's, and c's. So we've been doing this all the day long. The number in front of x squared is a, b is 15, and c is negative 54. If you need if you need help with that, you can always write standard form right above it. Go, standard form. Okay, axis of symmetry. Our formula is x equals negative b over 2a. And our b value is 15. And our a value is 1. Let's write that in. x equals 15 over 2 times one. Oh yes, and look what they did to us. X equals negative 15 over 2, which is your favorite of fraction. Now, you could uh, keep it a fraction, but decimals also help us with understanding of where it is. Negative 7 and a half is between negative 7 and 8. So, most important, this one goes right there. So negative seven and a half, and like I told you, it's between negative seven and negative eight. Okay, let's write down our equation here. Let's highlight that, I keep losing it. Here it is, in blue. Let's write that there. x squared plus 15x minus 54. And every x value, I'm going to put in the parentheses to show my substitution. So negative 9. Let's get a calculator. Negative 9 squared is 81. 15 times 9 gives you negative 135 minus 54. And... Um, plus 81 minus 54, uh, let's double check. Okay, so I got um, negative 108. Okay, it looks like we have the same, same thing. Let's see what happens. Let's put in negative 8, so it becomes positive 64, 15 times 8 gives me negative 120, minus 54, negative 110, mm, not good, alright let's try this next one. Something squared plus 15 times something minus 54. Okay, let's see. Let's put in negative 7.5. 7.5 uh, times 7.5 gives you 56.25. Fifteen times seven point five gives me one twelve, and that should be minus minus fifty four. Okay, negative one ten point two five. That was at negative seven and a half. So. Because the graph is opening up, because a is equal to 1, my vertex would be in the lowest point at negative 110.25 on the y values. All right. And uh, let's try negative 7. Let's put in our values. Negative 7. So I got 49. 7 times 15 
negative 105 minus 54. Negative 110. So negative 7 comma, negative 110. Oops, that should have been green, huh? Green. Cool. Okay. Let's do blue now. And we got negative 6. So 36 plus negative 90. Minus 54. 36 minus 90 minus 54. Negative 108. Did you see any values that are y values equal to 0? I did not. This is not going to be fun. It's okay. Still have fun. Okay. How would I do this? Okay. The y values are by. Um, let's count by tens. Or. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So if that one's negative 10, that'll be negative 111. And I need the negative sign, so negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's do our best. So left 9. Left 9, down 108. Left 8, down negative 110, so a little bit lower. Super close, negative 7.5, negative 110.25, so just a little bit further. Left 7, down negative 110, which is the same thing as the green and the blue. Negative 6, negative 108. Okay, here is our problem. I think you already see it. I was supposed to find something uh, here in the red dots. Was one of our coordinates have like x comma y to be something comma zero? No. So we'll turn to our graphing calculator x squared plus 15x, negative 54. Done. y equals, you can just uh, plus 15x minus 54. Let's press graph. And you um, can move over. So I have my two answers here. That would be 3 and Negative 18. Does that make sense? If you add those two values together, you will get negative 15. And if you multiply those together, you'll get negative 54. So those are our two solutions for those two problems. Shout out to Miss Aang for being the best math teacher that there is. And math is easy.